guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is about the dyno performance of these polymer racing products, dimpled carb spacers. So there's that. You can look right there if you would like to purchase these. But I'm gonna show you the dyno results from these because I used both. And I'm gonna give you some information about them. So we'll start off with what the dimple purpose is. Now, this gets spread around the most. Matter of fact, the third most popular video I ever had was when I dimpled an intake port and floated. And of course, the dimple idea comes from the golf ball, obviously, where they think that the dimples, of course, create these eddies and it makes the golf ball flow through the air better. So then people try to apply the same principles to engines, that these uh, dimples here would help the airflow go in whatnot. I'm not gonna go too scientifically into the weeds. The problem I always had with it is, and I've said this many times, is a golf ball is flying through the air. And in an engine, you have the golf ball surface and air is going through it. It's kind of the reverse. So, but that's just talking. Dyno tells you what, where, if it actually makes more power. So if it makes more power, does it, you know, theory is cool, but dyno numbers are better. So anyway, what happened was, I was looking, happened to look on Facebook and someone had said these were available because for the router stock for a while. So I actually hit up the company and I said, hey, I would love to test your spacers. And they were nice enough, and they sent me these two spacers. So this is the first one. This is a four-hole taper, which doesn't look like it, but here's this side. This is the carb side. You can see it's got a four-hole, but it does taper on this side. And this is what you get. Of course, you got your dimples, and it's pretty nice. you got this cool O-ring, too, that also seals on the base. It has these uh, metal bushings in here to prevent you from over-tightening or breaking your spacer. So that's a cool one. But they also sent me this one. Now, this is like a cloverleaf design. Let's see if I can find it. There's your part number for that one. The top looks like this, and the bottom has kind of a where it flares out. Same O-ring design, same steel spacers. So, I was like, well, I'm going to test these. So, I'm going to show you Dino's results with these because I did do something different. But I also have to talk about the other spacers because if this is better, we have to have tested it against the best one that I've used so far. So the reason why I have these stacked here is because I want to show you, I have tested all these spacers. So in a previous dyno session, not this one, I had tested, you know, an open hole versus this is a cheap Chinese knockoff of an HVH four hole taper. And this is probably the most expensive one I've ever tested. This comes from Rare Morrison. This is their anti-reversion plate, and that's the bottom piece. And this is the top piece, and they go together, tested it. And then I've even tested, this is a weird one. This is from HVH, but it's a 4500 to 4150 adapter. So yeah, it's tapered four hole, but it adapts to the dominator. And then there's this one. Of all of these spacers, this is actually the cheapest one. This comes from AFR. This is a four hole taper, kind of. It slightly tapers, but it's got a cone in the center. It's phenolic, and this comes from AFR. It's like 45 bucks. So, but anyway... When I had tested before, and I'm leaving this one off for now because this one actually is the best spacer I have ever tested, and I will talk about that, but it's, it's almost a cheater, so I'll come back to that. But when I tested all these spacers besides these two, so we'll leave these off for just a second, this AFR was the best one. So this AFR spacer was the best, and it was used on several different manifolds as well, but it has always been the best spacer to use. Um, when we're doing a 4150 flange intake manifold, it has always done better. Now, how much better? Not that much. Here's what sucks. So if you take all these spacers here, so we're going to leave these two off for right now, the nip ones. But if we take all these spacers, this one was only better by about three to four. And when I tested on a manifold, which I'll show you in a manifold in a second, that I was tested on without the spacer, this with the spacer only gained eight horsepower. So it's not like you gained 20. But this gained eight. So the others might have gained, like I said, about five. So point being is, in the test one I'm about to show you, I'm going to show you the difference between this AFR spacer, the best of the 4150s, versus, of course, these dimpled, tapered spacers. So let me uh, clear this space real quick, and I'll show you the manifold that was used. And then I'll talk about why this spacer was is the absolute best that I've ever tested. But I'm trying to get them to make it mad. But we'll get to that. So let me show you the manifold that was used, and we'll show you the dyno results also. This is the manifold that was used. And I'm going to tell you what the dyno uh, mule that we used to test these carb spacers was. It's a 406 small block Chevy. It's got a scat rotating assembly in it. And it has an Urson solid roller cam with a 260 degrees of duration on intake at 50 thousandths, 270 on exhaust, 108 lobe separation. 
685 lift. It's 11.2 compression ratio. It sports a set of AFR 227 competition port heads. They're in there out of the box. And we ran this head, or sorry, this manifold on this particular test I'm going to show you. And it had a 1,000 CFM 4150 Demon carburetor that was redone by Mark Wagner. Carburetor's been phenomenal. So that's pretty much the gist of it. It's a good running engine. The thing makes about 630 horsepower, so it's no slouch. It's definitely a uh, pretty good piece. It's run on 91 uh, octane with a, just a splash of 110. In other words, it's a 15 barrel, 15 gallon barrel, and it might have like a gallon of 110 in there. So if anything, it's just bringing it up, bringing it up to like 93. Does it need it? No, it's more for safety, honestly. It's never had any spark knock issues. So Nick, why did I pick this manifold to use? Well, for one, when that engine that I'm talking about, this 406 small block dynamo was used, the first intake that was ever tested was this one. And this was the one that was tested without a carb spacer. So when it went from this to this AFR, it gained eight horsepower. So what a great way to test to see if these do. The other reason is if you notice the top of this manifold, it's got a bit of a clover leaf. Now this is stock, as you could tell, it's not poured, it's not even port matched, not even close. Um, so I thought the reason why I wanted to use this is because they sent me this spacer. If you look at it, it's clover leaf. So I'm like, mm, maybe, you know, let's give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's try it on this. So here's the way it was run. So the first thing that was run was this. We ran it just like a normal one. We ran it just like this, 1,000 CFM. So we got our four-hole taper dimpled spacer. Then what I did was I put on this cloverleaf one just and then in this direction and ran it. But a lot of you are like, man, did you think about running it backwards? Yes, because if you look at this spacer, I'm like, it looks better actually this way. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. We run uh, spacers backwards before. Um, let's try it. Cause look, it, it actually looks like a great idea. I mean, it looks really good. So we ran it this way too. So, um, you have three with that. Then after that was done, we ran the AFR spacer. That was the last one. Cause that was kind of our control to see what the power difference was. Now, several of you may ask, well, did you try on this spacer running it backwards in previous tests? Not this one I have, and it's been absolutely horrible. If you run it backwards, it doesn't work. Um, especially some of the other four holes we tried it to. Bad idea. It doesn't work. But I did try this one backwards only. Okay? So, dimples. Let's get to the actual dyno test and show you the dyno numbers. What I'm about to show you are the dyno results. I am going to compile all the dyno tests from this session. So this happened last Wednesday, and there was like 27 dyno tests in there. All that will be compiled. It'll be a book for sale. Yes, I'm trying to recoup some of the money from the dyno test. So if you like that, I'm going to put a link under my, in the descriptions for my online store where you can pre-order the book, or if you'd rather have it this way, I will text you all of these because I know it's kind of hard to see on your screen and stuff. I will text you all these results for $10. And I mean, it's not just this, it's from the manifolds and everything else that was tested this. So besides just spacers, because in this particular dyno session, I also tested the Hulk um, 23 manifold, the 4150 version. I tested a port, ported 2892. Um, uh, Elderbrock 2970 was ported and also three different carburetors, a 750 vacuum secondary, a 650 vacuum secondary, and of course a thousand CFM. Also some Dominator spacers deals, which we're getting ready to get to, which is this buddy, which is the best one I've seen, but we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, here's our first results. This right here, and this is from an actual dyno graph. This isn't an infographic. This is from their actual dyno test. I need to back up to tell you this too. An extra amount of care was taken in getting the temperatures the same for each test. And let me explain what this means because it might lose some of you. And earlier, so when we first started doing this dyno test, I'd actually tested this spacer here on a different manifold. And the difference was only like five horsepower. So, or three horsepower on a different one. So because it, it was so close as far as power difference, the last, when we do it on that manifold I just showed you, which was close to the last test that we did, we did everything we could to get the water temperature and the oil temperature really, really close. So we got them to like within three degrees, which is really close. And the reason why is if you have a water temperature that's 10 degrees different between one run to the other, it will make the engine look like it made more power, but it's because of the water 
temperature difference, not so much the spacers. So these are within three on both water and oil temperature. In other words, as close as you can get. What you see here is this red line right here, which is really hard to see. This is this damp dimpled one. That's this one. The black line you see is this is the AFR four hole tapered. This has been the best one of the 4150s before. And you can kind of track and see what it's done. So the red ones look a little bit better. And we started the pools not really, really low down, um, like 4,700. But you could tell um, it's a little bit better there. It's worse in the middle, the dimple is. But then the dimple's a little bit better there at the top. And then it kind of about the same there. Those differences, in case you're wondering, I'll show you the actual dyno numbers here in a second. But it's pretty, pretty small. So this is the overlay, just to give you an idea. So a little bit better at the top. A little bit there, better there, worse in the middle. But again, there's not a huge difference there. Now for the next one. This one's the more exciting one. This truly is the best one of them. The thing you really should be watching this video for is this. Get it turned. This is the different one. What we have here in the red line is the AFR four hole taper, which it's really hard to see. If you could tell, it starts here. It's the lowest at the beginning. And then it kind of gets blended in. You don't really see it again. So we can almost ignore that. Then we've got the black line is this one. Now this is exciting. See this black line right here? This is the dimpled, but it's backwards. So here we have the clover leaf this way. So it's sitting on the manifold exactly this way, which is the backwards way it, which it should be. Sitting like this. That's the black line. The blue one is this direction, which I'll show you in a second. And then of course the green line is your tapered four hole. Now look at it. The only thing that really can stands out and it stands out really, really clear because you look, a lot of these are just pretty much them almost identical, right? Except for here and here. That here and here is this spacer, the dimpled one, this direction. That's right. This one is the weirdest test there is because all of them, so if it gains, if you think it gained 20, it didn't. But what you can tell is it's a little bit better each step. As you can tell, this is the blue one. We did not drag the engine down as far when I had it with that one on. I don't know why we didn't. I, being honest, it probably just a brain fart on us. But anyway, regardless, if it had, it probably would have been way up here too. But for sure, the dimpled is better at the lower RPMs. So we started the pull at 4,500. The red one's the AFR. Those dimpled spacers are better. But this is next level. This is so much better having it face this direction with the dimples. Not only that, it's the same through the middle, so it didn't lose anything. And at the top, it's better. And that's in the 7,000 RPM range. So having this spacer is now the in this direction makes the best 4150 manifold spacer I have tested. Now, what the weird thing is to find out would be, is it better on other intakes? Because the sad part is I did not try this spacer on other intakes. So during this dyno session, I tried this one on several. So on that port of 2892, it actually lost three horsepower to this, but gained three foot pounds of torque versus the AFR. On the 4150, the Hulk 4150, it gained five and, uh, sorry, yeah, it gained five and like five foot pounds of torque to this. You're like, why don't you show that in this video? I'm saving them for another video because let's be honest, I'm using that for more content. But this is the best one you're going to get anyway for as far as the dimpled spacers. So it was pretty much a wash and I didn't think much about using it until the AFR intake that we're using. So I didn't use this on other intakes and I wish I would have now because it did so well. So in this particular combination, it's, it's quite outstanding. I mean, that's good. Now, is it because of the dimples? That's the real question you're watching the video for. I don't know. Because the dimples themselves may not be the ticket here. It might be we now have flared out and it necks down and it makes more power. That may be the issue more than the dimples. Because if you look at these two, you have your dimpled four hole versus a smooth four hole. Besides the very beginning of the run, they're virtually identical. They're really, really close, which is what the last graph showed. But let's show you the raw numbers. Try and turn this by hand. I also don't want to lose these. So let's see. Lay these out like this. Uh, 
give me just a second. I'm sorry. Makes me look weird, but I'm trying to get this all laid out best I can. I should have prepared a little bit better. Before you look at these graphs, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. When you're looking at the fuel flow, it's wrong. The reason why it's wrong is because I accidentally knocked off the sensor that reads the second channel for the fuel flow. Um, you've got one on a dyno. You've got a sensor that reads the fuel flow from one of the um, uh, regulators, which feeds the front bowl. And then you've got another one that reads the for the second uh, regulator, which feeds the back bowl. And I knocked off the wire that feeds the second one. So it doesn't show. That's why the, the fuel looks weird. And so with the calculated air fuel ratio, it's not that lean. Speaking of which, because someone's going to ask me, did you jet different for any of them? No. Here's the thing. I'm watching the actual O2 sensors. We actually have an O2 sensor. They're all reading within 12.8 to 13.0. And you're like, wow, that's really lean. It makes the most power there. Could jetting have changed it? Not enough. And I'm going to be honest with you and tell you guys this. If you're between 12.5 and 12 or 13, changing any jets gains like three horsepower, which might have made the difference where these would have been the same, but they were already so close to the same. It could have done this either way on both of them. So those are pretty much a wash. That's the only one that's really the outlier. So the air fuel ratios are virtually identical. But anyway, here we have the dimpled four hole tapered spacer, okay? So this is the dimple, that's this one right here. We're gonna look at just peaks just for fun. And by the way, like I said, you, 10 bucks, you can get all these sheets just text to you, or you can buy a pre-order the book and you have them in your hand. But peak power came in at 627.1, that's 66. This I believe is the, a, that's a clover. Let's find the AFR one. There it is. Nope. Here's the AFR. 630. So it actually made more peak power, the AFR spacer, than that. So more peak power than this. Only at peaks. But then you look at some of the others. Let's look at the peak torque. 556 versus the templed was 557. See, so it's, they're pretty much washed. They're so close, it's, it's too close. I mean, that's like two horsepower. I mean, it will repeat, obviously, if we get the water temperature the same. But the difference comes from this dude. So let's just do it with uh, facing normal. So if we face normal, it made 527, which is about the same as the, the regular four-hole tapered. And still less than this by two. And then torque, though, 556 versus the AFRs, 556 versus the... 557. So again, 56, 56 on torque. I'm facing this direction, by the way. 57. So it's so close. But this direction's where things change. This clover in this direction gets this. Now let's look at the peak torque. 560 torque. Actually, sorry, 562 torque compared to the. Remember, that, this direction, 562. These were 556 or 557. And uh, 555 or 567, I mean, whatever, it's about the same. These are virtually identical. This one's the one that's higher, 562. It's better than those. <laughs> it's having it face that direction. So here's the crazy part. So I started to pull at uh, 47. That's 560 foot pounds of torque at 47. Let's go to theirs. 4,700, 543. That's almost 30. Uh, and this is the dimpled clover leaf. So this direction versus this clover or this uh, tapered four hole in this direction, that was almost 30 foot pounds of torque at 4,700. That is crazy. And then if you look at the AFRs, let me get to that one. The AFR was at 4,700, 540. So it's still up 20 foot pounds of torque in this direction versus these in their normal direction. Insane, right? All right, let's look at the peak power though. This one did a 629.8, which if you look, that's uh, virtually identical. So this made the same peak power in this direction as this one, but it was better than that. Now, if you look further on though, let's see, the D, the AFR spacer at 7,000 though was making 618. This clover with the dimples in the backward direction was making 621 or 22 almost. So it was better, so it's five better at the higher RPM too, you see what I mean? So if you're looking at, man, I was really wanting to find out if dimples make more power. From what I could tell, as far as the spacers wise, the dimples themselves, it doesn't seem like it added any more power. But this one, just because of its design, most likely did. So it's like one of those weird flukes where things, sometimes what you don't think will work, will work. So I thought you'd get a kick out of it. Now, you might be saying, well, 
I thought I saw something online and they make 20 more horsepower. This is one situation. In other situations, that might be different. So don't take this as absolute gospel. But it is something to think about. Um, however, in all my testing, no spacer. And remember, this is the big block Chevy I've got a dyno mule for, for in case you've never watched my channel. Um, we have two of those that we've dynoed quite a bit extensively. No spacer has ever gained 20 with the exception of this. And this is the reason why it's here. This is the only spacer that's ever gained 20. And on every single combination it's been on, whether it be the 406, hell, even in the customer's engines, every single thing this ever has been on, everything, big block, small block, does not matter. This has made 20, but it's a cheater. And let me explain. This is an HVH, but it's a 4150 bottom. So this is made for the 4150 manifolds, 4500 top. It's tapered down. This is the only one I've ever tested where I could say, if I put this on with the Dominator versus this or any of these, because if I put that on, on the same one as this, this would have been up 15 solid horsepower everywhere and about 20 foot pounds of torque. This one is the only one so far. Now I have been trying, because I contacted um, Polymer Racing Products, we'll give them a plug again. And I want to see if I can't get them. And they've been really great, so maybe they will. But they're like, they just don't have enough market for us, what they said. I want to see them make this tapered four hole dominator down to 4150 in a dimpled. Because that may be the ticket. Um, but right now, so far, that's the best spacer I could say for sure gains you power. These other ones, they do gain, just not like that. This is a small gains. That's big. So, but anyway, I know I went a little bit long-winded, but there's a lot of information in these. Thanks again to Polymer Racing Products. They got a great spacer. It, I mean, it does function. If you're buying that and you got a, one of them AFR spacers or intakes, you might want to put it like this, give it a run. They might say, well, that's only one test. Remember, I also tested this one on many other ones. I just did in this one. because I honestly didn't think it would work. And that was a mistake. So in future tests, I'm going to test more of these on different engine combinations like this to see if it does anything. If it's just a fluke, it only does with the AFR intake. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.